Hey guys, today we're going to continue our theme from a previous video and show you how to import an AAF file into Pro Tools. Okay, so if you have not watched my previous video about how to export an AAF file in Premiere for use by an audio engineer in Pro Tools, then I recommend checking it out. Even if you're an audio person that never uses Premiere, it can still be useful to know how this works so you can help out a client if need be. So today, we will start where we left off with that last video and talk about how to then properly import an AAF file into Pro Tools. So obviously, we're gonna open up Pro Tools first. Then, there are a couple of different ways we can do this. One is to go to Open Session and choose your AAF file. This is a good option if you're starting from scratch and don't already have an existing session. You can then choose your parameters in the New Session dialog. For the options here, I would try to stick with whatever the AAF file was saved as. So if that was using WAV files, I would pick WAV files for my session. And I would try to match the sample rate and bit depth, but maybe increase sample rate if I want to. The benefit of upsampling or otherwise increasing these values is that any processing that you put on these tracks within Pro Tools, through plugins or otherwise, will then be in the higher sample rate or bit depth. Otherwise, there's not much benefit to increasing sample rate and bit depth from the source values, and since it's a minimal difference, I usually just recommend matching these parameters. Then, I like to check off interleaved, but it's also a personal preference. Checking off interleaved will make it so that all your stereo files in your session will be saved as one file each, whereas unchecking interleaved makes it so that any stereo files will be saved as two distinct audio files, one file for the left channel and another for the right channel. Then, just hit OK and name your session, saving it where you want it to be located. Then, you will see the Import Session Data dialog. But, before we go into this dialog, I'll show you the other way to start this process. So, if you already have a session created, maybe with some audio already in it, or if you wanted to use an existing template of yours, then you might want to import the AAF into that session instead of creating a brand new session. To do this, you can go to File, then Import, then choose Session Data, then choose your AAF file to import. You can also use the keyboard shortcut to get to the Import Session Data dialog, which is to hold down the Alt and the Shift key, and then press the I key, I for Import. Once you select the AAF file and hit the Open button, you'll then be on the same Import Session Data dialog that we were on earlier through the New Session path. Within this dialog, you can see details about the source AAF data, notably the timecode format, bit depth, sample rate, and frame rate. This is good to glance at so you can make sure that you made your session properly and matched any parameters that you wanted to match. If your session sample rate differs from the source sample rate, you will then want to check out the sample rate conversion options here, checking the apply SRC checkbox and setting the source and destination sample rates appropriately. Using the timecode mapping options and the track offset options on the top right here, adjust where and how the data is placed within your session. I often end up just leaving the timecode mapping options at maintain absolute timecode values and the track offset options at zero, so I'm not offsetting anything. Choosing the maintain absolute timecode values option within the timecode mapping options section will make it so that if your current session starts at zero but the imported timecode starts at one hour, then the imported media will all be placed at one hour down your timeline. Whereas if you choose maintain relative timecode values, then in the same example, your imported media will be placed at zero. Anyway, the Media Options section gives you some more options about whether or not you'd like to copy the audio files into your Pro Tools session. It's kind of like when you import audio into a session and decide whether to copy or convert, or add the audio files to the session without copying or converting. Choose Copy from Source Media to copy the files over to your Pro Tools session, or just choose Link to Source Media for Pro Tools to reference the source audio where it currently exists, when possible. You can also choose here to consolidate from source media, which copies over your audio into your audio files folder, just like the copy option, except it removes all unused areas on the media that it's copying. So it can reduce the file size, which is great, but you have less of the original audio or media preserved with this option. The handle size here tells Pro Tools how much additional data from the ends of each clip to keep, kind of like as a buffer, if that makes sense. Or you can choose to force to target session format, which converts the AAF data so that the parameters match that of your session file format if those two are different. Anyway, I usually just leave it at copy from source media. I like to copy all imports into my Pro Tools session so I don't have to worry about losing things when I then transfer sessions. But it does take more time on the import for this and it also takes up more memory space on your computer, so that's something to consider. I usually just leave the video media options in the bottom half of this section as is, since I'm importing video separately. 
I do that because I'm in Pro Tools 11 and I sometimes get an error message when I try to import video with the AAF file and that's from what I think is a bug that they worked out in Pro Tools 12. Anyway, we talked about that issue briefly in the video on exporting AAF files, so check out that video if you haven't already. But anyway, in this section, you can choose whether to copy or convert the video media as well. In the track section, you can see all the tracks in the AAF file and deselect any that you don't want to import. So this section really lets you pick and choose which tracks you'd like to import. You can also adjust the destination for tracks here, but I like to leave these on new track so that Pro Tools creates a whole new track for each one that was on your AAF file. I just feel like it's usually easier for me to stay organized that way and really see what I'm working with from the start. So that's what I almost always choose. In the session data section, you can pick and choose a bit more about what gets imported. All these parameters are pretty self-explanatory, but let me know if you want more explanation on anything in the comments below. Since I usually do this at the beginning stages of working on a project, I tend to leave the parameters how you see here. I usually check off import rendered audio effects though, which will give you separate tracks for any effects they had on a track. I also tend to choose to import clip gain, automation, all markers, and all track data. And I make all these decisions because I really want to see what the client did before sending me the AAF file. It helps me get an idea for what they were going for. So even though I might delete most of the automation and effects, for example, and replace them with my own, I still like to see what they had as a starting point. And I believe that's it for this dialog window. So then you just hit OK and Pro Tools will import the data. Then it's just a matter of organizing and becoming familiar with what you've imported. I often start by color coding tracks based on what's on the track putting notes in the comments section of tracks, and combining into actual stereo tracks any mono tracks that are actually the left and right portion of a stereo track, because they often get split in the export import process. And that's basically it. I hope you guys liked this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. For today's question, I want to hear about your experiences doing post-production work. Please leave your answers in the comments below. So thanks guys. If you guys like this video, please watch my other videos or check out my Patreon. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday, and thanks for watching. Okay. <sighs> I am currently wearing my PJs under this jacket. PJ shirt, PJ pants. Got my comfy, comfy PJ pants. Ch -ch -ch.